In problem 4.53, we're asked to find the Norton equivalent circuit for this circuit we have right here. We have a dependent voltage source, which gives off the voltage to VO, where VO is the voltage as measured across this 10 ohm resistor. We've got a 20 ohm resistor here, we've got a 3 amp current source, and we're asked to find the Norton equivalent relative to terminals A and B. We can do this in two steps. The first step is to find the Norton equivalent current, and then the next step will be to find the Norton equivalent resistance. So let's go ahead and remind ourselves the definition of the Norton equivalent current is that it is equal to the short circuit current. And so here we have a short that I've added to the circuit, a short between A and B and we're asked to find what is the current that would flow through here if we were to short those two terminals. So we can analyze this using some of the standard practices that we have done before. We can redraw this circuit by simply moving the 3 amp current source up above. That makes it a little bit more obvious that we really just have two meshes. There's nothing different in what we have here versus what was down below. But now we see that we have a two mesh circuit. The top mesh current is obviously three amps. And then down here, we're just gonna call this the IN mesh. And so we'll solve for this Norton circuits current, the Norton current right there, as the mesh current in this bottom mesh. So if we go around and develop our equation at the bottom mesh, we have negative two VO plus 20 ohms times IN plus 10 ohms times IN minus 3 amps, so IN is in the direction, 3 amps is opposing it, and that equals zero volts. We also know that we can solve for VO because that is gonna equal the current through this 10 ohm resistor multiplied by 10 ohms. So we have 10 ohms times, and this is gonna be IN minus 3 amps, so that's what VO is right there. And we can substitute that back in to our equation that we have just developed. So everywhere I see VO, which is just right here, I'm gonna plug in 10 ohms times IN minus three amps. So I've got negative two times that quantity plus what we already had before over here. And so now if we go ahead and distribute the negative two, go ahead and distribute the 10 ohms across here, we get negative 20 ohms IN plus 60 volts plus 20 ohms IN, plus 10 ohms IN, minus 30 volts. We went ahead and distributed this 10 ohms across here equals zero volts. And so we end up with 30 volts plus 10 ohms IN equals zero volts. And so therefore IN equals negative 30 volts divided by 10 ohms or negative three amps. So now we have our Norton equivalent current. And so that would be three amps uh, pointing downward if you were to draw it in the standard um, orientation or just negative three amps pointing upward in the Norton equivalent. Now to find the Norton equivalent resistance there's actually a couple options of what we can do here. In both options we're going to turn off all of the independent sources. So if we only had independent sources then this problem would become rather easy where we're just going to turn off all our independent sources and then look for REQ relative to the two terminals that we have. Because we have a dependent source, we can't just do that. So we're gonna start by turning off our independent sources, but we're gonna leave in our dependent source and we're gonna apply a test source. Now, we can either apply a test voltage and then solve for the current through it, or we can apply a test current source and solve for the voltage across it. So in this case, we've got this mesh here. We've gone ahead and taken out, turned off, our independent current source. And so in this case, I've applied a little one volt test voltage. And now our goal is to solve for I test, which is gonna go this direction. It's important to pay attention to the direction of the test current that we're looking for. And our Norton equivalent resistance is gonna equal the voltage of the test voltage, which we just made one volt, divided by the current of the test source. So the current that would flow through that test source in the direction indicated. So we can go ahead and do some mesh analysis here. We'll call this the IT or I test um, mesh. And so if we're solving for that, we'll end up with a negative one volt plus 10 ohms times IT plus 20 ohms times IT plus two V naught 
equals zero volts. And if we look here for V naught, it's gonna actually equal 10 ohms times negative IT. So if IT had gone clockwise, it would have just been 10 ohms times IT. But you notice the positive is here, the negative is on the right hand side. And so IT is going backwards through that. So we need 10 ohms times negative IT. Now we go down here, we've got negative one volt plus 10 ohms IT plus 20 ohms IT minus, now here we're plugging in the um, 10 ohms times negative IT into our uh, plus 2VO. So we've actually got minus 20 ohms times IT. Now we've got our entire equation in terms of IT and we go through condensing things, moving constants over to the right hand side. We do solve and find that IT equals one tenth amp. And so now our RN is just going to be equal to our voltage of the test voltage source divided by the current through it. And so that ends up being one volt divided by one tenth of an amp or 10 ohms. We could also approach this by instead putting a little test current source. Typically you're going to see a one amp source. Now, the mistake I made in class when I was explaining this was I put V naught out here as though that was the same as this. That is not V naught. We'll just call this V test. And so here our RN is still going to be V test divided by I test. And in this case, I test is the current through this little test current source or one amp. And so now if we go on through this, let's go ahead and observe we have one amp flowing. And so V naught is simply going to be negative one amp times 10 ohms. We already know the mesh current. It's just a matter of now solving for these voltages. So we know V naught is negative one amp times 10 ohms. And so that is negative 10 volts. Now, if we go ahead and apply this, go around and do a full mesh, we end up with negative V test. So that is this voltage here, plus 10 ohms times the one amp, plus 20 ohms times the one amp, plus two V naught equals zero volts. Now, if we go ahead and plug in that V naught is equal to negative 10 volts, we get negative 20 right here for our two V naught. We can go ahead and multiply through 10 ohms times one amp and get uh, tw 10 volts here, 20 ohms times one amp. That gives us another 20. So 10 plus 20 gives us the 30 volts. And we've still got a minus V test. And so we went ahead and plugged in our V naught here and we end up with negative V test plus 10 volts equals zero. So V test actually equals 10 volts. So now if we plug in RN equals 10 volts divided by our one amp test current, we still get that RN equals 10 ohms. So we get the same resistance no matter whether we apply a test voltage or we apply a test current. We get 10 ohms in both cases.